It seems that every nonprofit today is trying to capture the elusive younger donor. I'm going to share with you some findings I discovered about their giving and what you can do to use those to your advantage to get younger donors to give to your organization. Stay tuned. In 2022, it seems to be all the rage to target young donors. There isn't a nonprofit leader that I know that isn't eyeballing the giving habits of younger donors and isn't shifting even a little to reflect what's perceived to be the beliefs of Gen X, Millennials, and Gen Z. Some organizations have even begun to abandon what baby boomers like in an attempt to attract young donors, but all indications are that that's a big mistake and those nonprofits are turning off the current generation of givers and leaving billions of dollars on the table. A recent survey and report commissioned and released by Gray Matter Research and Infinity Concepts revealed some interesting and even startling statistics. I'm going to share those highlights with you today and what you might do to prepare for and even combat those issues that have surfaced. I'd like to give them credit and recognition for the data shared and then I'll give my recommendations. Before sharing this information, there's one caveat. This survey was taken from the responses given by a thousand American Evangelical Protestants. Now before you immediately stop watching this video, be aware that this audience has always been known to be some of the most committed donors to nonprofit organizations and has often been a good indicator of true giving in America. One interesting statement caught my attention immediately from the report. It said it is quite common for ministries and charities to seek ways to attract younger people as donors. For some with particularly aged donor bases, this might mean reaching into the 50s or 60s for new donors, but for many it means attempts to attract donors who are in their 40s, 30s, or even 20s. They went on to say the problem is that too often organizations are trying to attract a 35-year-old donor with the same strategies and approaches that help them attract all their 65-year-old donors. And we are about to demonstrate to you that this approach has significant challenges because in a variety of ways, younger donors think about giving very differently from older donors. Wise words. This report highlighted a lot of the interesting findings specifically about older donors and younger donors, but today I'm just going to focus in on the differences. Let's jump into those findings and see how younger donors differ from older donors. Finding number one. Younger donors under age 40 prefer giving overseas to giving domestically. 34% of younger donors prefer giving overseas versus 28% of older donors. Overall, the giving of younger donors lean towards and seem to prefer giving overseas. Older donors seem to prefer giving domestically. My first overseas trip was in 1987. My wife and I served as leaders for our nonprofit, taking students to Istanbul, Turkey, to study language and culture. At the time, traveling overseas was a big deal. The adjustment was not only difficult for the students, most of which were from very rural small towns, but it was also difficult for us. From eating blood sausages on a stopover in Eastern Europe to living in a hostel in Istanbul, culture shock was apparent. Today, the world is much smaller. Young people are used to communicating with people around the world on social media and even virtually. It makes sense that this next generation will find it so easy to communicate with people of their generation 10,000 miles apart and would also see an interest in financially supporting efforts internationally rather than domestically. Finding number two, younger donors prefer giving beyond their local area. 48% of younger donors are more open to giving beyond their local area. Older donors prefer giving locally. Once again, while young people see the needs in the U.S. as being great, they see needs in other nations as being greater and even more glamorous. Where I was taught to support efforts locally, my first memory of giving back to the community was an after-school effort in a nearby retirement home. Those young people today are exposed to opportunities to help impoverished nations around the globe. Finding number three. Younger donors are less likely to start by trusting an organization. 35% of younger donors are less likely to start by trusting an organization. They lead with being more skeptical. Older donors lead with being more trusting of an organization. 
This has been a major shift in the generations as the greatest generation was known for giving and trusting the organizations which they gave. Baby boomers at the time were the skeptical ones. Now aging seems to have softened them and made them more trusting while the younger generation are now the skeptical ones. Finding number four, younger donors are more likely to learn about a new organization. 41% of younger donors would prefer giving to a new organization than supporting something that's familiar to them. Older donors prefer supporting something familiar or with a long-standing reputation. As part of this, younger donors, 49 versus 31 percent, are much more likely to spread their money around to a wide variety of organizations, where older donors prefer to give more to a few organizations. As far back as the 1980s, large organizations saw great dominance in the nonprofit marketplace because strong reputation meant strong loyalty. Organizations like World Vision, Salvation Army, Catholic Charities, Campus Crusade for Christ, and Billy Graham Evangelical Association all enjoyed strong donor bases. Small organizations struggled to compete with the larger, more dominant organizations. But in the 2000s, there started to be a surge in support for smaller, nimbler organizations, and it seems those small organizations were more creative and able to better adjust and adapt to a changing environment. Not surprisingly, the uh, younger donor who honors and respects entrepreneurship, 75% of Gen Z wants to be a YouTube creator versus a business tycoon, would give to the smaller organization with a better idea. Finding number five, younger donors are more likely to give spur of the moment gifts. 39% of young donors prefer giving at a moment's notice rather than plan their giving in advance. Older donors prefer to plan their giving way in advance of their gift. Growing up, my father's definition of giving was reaching into his pocket and pulling out and giving at the offering plate anything that was in his pocket. He was not only a part of the greatest generation, but also lived during the Depression era, where poverty was rampant and giving to charities was a luxury. He didn't plan because he never knew whether he was going to have money to give. Giving was very special to him. Baby boomers, on the other hand, were given so much more and thus had the luxury of planning ahead and giving generously. Young donors tend to lean towards spur-of-the-moment giving because they don't have much confidence about their future. Only 19% of Gen Z is optimistic about their future. All this information is helpful in determining how to view young donors and how they differ from older donors. As a way to continue meeting the needs of the baby boom generation while also incorporating the changing patterns of the younger donor, I'm recommending the following to you. Number one. Since baby boomers prefer giving domestically, but the younger donors prefer giving globally, find organizations that are based in the U.S. but work with nationals in-country rather than U.S. staff in a foreign country. This may help to bridge the gap between the generations. Recommendation number two, begin to recruit younger donors to be board members and let them into decision making. Baby boomers currently make up a majority of the board of directors of nonprofits and have close working relationship with nonprofit leaders. This has been happening for nearly 20 years, and it's no wonder they trust nonprofits. They're part of the leadership. Recruiting younger donors to be on boards and to be part of the discussion with nonprofit leaders, soliciting their opinions and expertise, will pull them into the inner circle and help build their confidence and trust in the nonprofit leadership of your organization. Recommendation number three, rebrand or spin off a division of your organization. Younger donors like new organizations for their fresh ideas and current perspective versus the old established organization supported by their elders. Finding ways to rebrand an old image can pump new life into an older organization. Our organization rebranded with a new and fresh name with the help of marketing experts who lean towards the younger side. It gave us a fresh outlook and perspective and helped to revitalize an old image. Spinning off a division with a new name, younger leadership with an entrepreneurial spirit might attract younger donors. This should not be like painting over mold. For a totally new perspective, the vision may have to be a wholly owned subsidiary with the freedom to come up with new ideas completely separate from the parent organization. 
That could include young leadership, young board, and young donors to envision a unique plan for the future of the nonprofit. Our organization had a service-based division called GAIN, but recently rebranded to Unto to give it a new image and brand that better addresses who they are and what they actually do. And they seem to be doing very well since the change. Recommendation number four. In addition to giving to ongoing organizations, special projects should be created. If young people respond to spur-of-the-moment opportunities, special projects and programs should be given to them for consideration in their giving. A combination of ongoing efforts and priority projects should be offered in all direct marketing, events, phone, and in-person appeals. This would allow for diversity of giving and an avenue to be creative in giving to projects that would be directed to immediate impact. Looking for ways to address the diversity of feelings among the younger and older donors will allow for a smoother transition and greater retention of donors from one generation to the next. Transfer of wealth from one generation to the next is inevitable, but creating an organization has a presence both domestically and internationally allows for inclusion of young as well as old into decision making, a rebranding of old ideas and habits, and crafting proposals for priority or special projects in addition to ongoing efforts will accommodate for generational giving changes. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, hit the like button and add a comment below if you've got some good ideas about appealing to younger donors, things that you've found that are helpful to you and might be helpful for this community. To let me know you got this far in the video, type the word generations in the comments section. It's a fun exercise to help me find out if this kept your attention. If you're interested in joining me in making a change in our world and even for eternity, please hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. If you want to find out how to connect with donors, watch this video and raise more money than ever. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.